rendering PCs. What matters, what doesn't? Let's find out. What's up guys? Welcome back to another Giga Geek video. And recently, I've had a 3D artist reach out to me asking if I could build a computer for him. And of course, I said yes. And today I'll be going over the specs I chose and sort of, and sort of a recommendation I have for 3D artists, people who are rendering with their computers and those sort of tasks. So without any further ado, let's begin. Now, rendering is an extremely demanding workload and you can spend tens of thousands of dollars on workstation computers. But my client had a budget around five to six thousand dollars, so this is as high end as consumer grade parts get for this budget. Now for all you thread abusers out there, this is not that, but I will be discussing that later in the video. Let's get into our part choice selection. Starting with the CPU, I chose the Ryzen 9 9950X. I had a choice between the i9-14900K and the Ryzen 9 7950X when I originally spec'd out this build, but as you've seen recently, Intel has had so many issues with their chips and I didn't feel comfortable putting that into the build. And by the time the, the patch came out to actually fix these chips, the Ryzen 9 9000 series came out, so it worked out perfectly and the 9950X is a great choice. So there are two main reasons I went with the 9950X. One, multi-core speed, and two, efficiency. A lot of reviewers have, you know, slept on this chip and say, hey, it's not that big of a difference in gaming applications, but in more workstation applications like rendering and those sort of uh, hardcore tasks, you can really see a big performance boost with these chips. The 9950X is a 16 core chip that is significantly faster in multi-core performance than the previous counterparts like the 14900K, comes a little close, and this most notably the 7950X, which is the previous generation. And with rendering applications, render times and overall performance scales really well with additional cores. And the Ryzen 9000 series has been extremely efficient. Most reviewers kind of sleep on it, but the number one performance metric in workstation uses is reliability. And we don't want to see any performance dips, crashes, none of that. And when a CPU is drawing 300, 400 watts, it becomes really hard to cool and sometimes you can see some instability issues. Intel, take some notes. But the 9950X only draws around 170 watts, so I'm able to use still a very high-end 360 millimeter liquid cooler, which I'll get to, but I'm able to run the fans a little slower just for some more quiet operation, overall better reliability for the fans in the long run, and obviously it looks great. And the Ryzen 9 9950X is what I would consider an entry-level high-end chip. And the next level would be a Threadripper platform chip, and this allows two main things. One, expandability, which I'll get to later in the video, and second is core count. The other chips can go from 16, 32, 64, even 96 cores, and as rendering applications use really scale well with the number of cores, you can really see big performance jumps going from consumer grade to the professional space with Threadripper chips. The CPU cooler I chose was the NZXT Kraken Elite 360. This is an amazing CPU cooler. I've used it plenty of times before. The LCD screen looks absolutely amazing, especially when I put that clock on there. It, it looks really classy. It's a 360 millimeter AIO, and since the Ryzen 9 is efficient, I'm able to run the fan slower, like I talked about before, so it can run really quiet. If you're not a huge fan of AIOs, another idea would be the Noctua NHD15 in black. Great looking cooler. It's a very good performing cooler as well, and it'll cool the chip just good. As for motherboards, it's not a huge deal. I went with the X670 Aorus Elite AX from Gigabyte. Just get one with the features you need. This has plenty of I.O. on the back if you wanted to you know, add more you know, USB things, anything really. And it fits in with the aesthetic we chose as well. As for RAM, I'm gonna say it's simple. I'd recommend 32 gigabytes minimum. I would recommend 64 gigabytes as sort of a mid-range. And if you're a power user who's rendering a lot of complex models, just like my client, I would go with 128 gigabytes. I went with Corsair Dominator Platinum memory. Right now I went with 32 gigabytes because I'm currently waiting on two 64 gig kits to arrive, but you know, I had to film the video, so I put that in there. And it looks absolutely amazing. The little squares of LED are really classy, it's not too much. And I've used Dominator Platinum before, and it's a very reliable kit of RAM. If you have any other questions about RAM speeds, timings, or like that, leave a comment down below. I answer every single one. 
Storage is also something that takes up a lot of importance in the build. 3D artists are creators. Me, as a video editor, I store an enormous amount of files on my computer and on my NAS. And 3D artists don't all only do 3D rendering. I've talked to some 3D artists who are doing some you know, After Effects work on the side. And this is sort of a general outline of what I would recommend creators use for their storage workflow. Your first drive should be an OS and application drive. You're gonna be storing your operating system, Windows 11 on here, and whatever rendering applications you're using. An NVMe drive at 4.0 speeds of around 500 gigabytes will do you just fine. Second drive is your cache drive. And you should remember these three things when buying one. Speed, capacity, and endurance. The cache drive should be the fastest drive in your system that you can afford. PCIe 4.0 and VME drives are gonna be just fine. And a capacity of around one terabyte is usually best. I went with two terabytes because my client requested it. Lastly, endurance. As a creator, you are reading and writing a lot of files onto this cache drive. Take a look at these two metrics, total bytes written and daily writes per day. These two will give you an idea of the endurance of the drive. For me, what I've seen is Sabrent really has really good speeds along with a very strong endurance on their Sabrent Rocket 4.0 and those series of NVMe SSDs. Lastly, archive drives. These are the most subjective depending on your workload. I went with the two terabyte SATA SSD. These are generally a little cheaper, a little slower, but I can get a higher capacity. Again, it's super subjective. You can go with a four terabyte hard drive, eight terabyte hard drive, even a NAS if you wanted to. Um, I just thought that the two terabyte SATA SSD worked best for my client. Before we get into the GPU choice for today, we always leave that for last. I wanna talk about some of the accessories I chose for this computer. Starting off with the fans, I went with not one, not two, not three, but seven Silent Wings Pro 4 fans. They're really expensive, they come out at around $30 per fan, but they are extremely high quality. One, they are extremely silent. At idle, I can barely hear them, and even at load, it's just a small whisper. These are really high quality fans, and it goes to show that more fans doesn't always mean more noise. Second, the fans come with different corners for different use cases. For example, the radiator, you want as little space between the fans as possible to maximize the pressure through the radiator. So we, I went with the right corners for that specific use case. Now for the front and the back, I went with the silent version of you know, the corners uh, for more silent operation. And you know, you can just tell when you receive a really high quality fan down to the, even the, the cable that comes off of it. It's braided, it's very high quality. Um, and they look really good in this blacked out build. For the other ones, these are purely for aesthetics. I went with Asia Horse black cable extensions. I've used them plenty of times, super reliable and they look absolutely amazing. Just nice, black, simple, clean. They actually did not come with a 12 volt high power connector, so I went with one from Easy DIY so I could plug it into the GPU. And then I went with this top RGB strip just to illuminate the build and give it some class. <laughs> also, the GPU is beautiful, so I just had to go with a vertical GPU bracket. Lastly, the moment you've all been waiting for, the GPU. Most rendering applications will allow you to use the GPU to render scenes, but here's a list of popular rendering applications and whether or not you can render from both the CPU and the GPU. And for this build, I went with the highest end, the RTX 4090. But why didn't I go with a Quadro card like I did in my last video? Two reasons, price and performance. Quadro cards benefit the most in applications that use at high amounts of precision, but it's often at a performance hit. And the CAD PC I built for a client a while back is solely for CAD users and engineers who need the features that Quadro cards offer. And I'll keep plugging if you go wanna watch that video. It's in my channel. The RTX 4090 offers a significant boost in performance compared to Quadro cards at around the same price point and are still certified and tested to work with a lot of rendering and modeling softwares, so that really isn't an issue. And the 24 gigabytes of VRAM on the GPU is significantly more than the 16 on just the next tier below, which is the RTX 4080 Super, and that really comes into play when you are rendering large, complex rendering scenes. Let's talk about the level above this. 
the Red Ripper CPU is allowed for more expandability, meaning that you can add one, two, three, four, even more 4090 GPUs that rendering softwares can take advantage of. Consumer chips don't allow you to do that. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'm planning on doing a more affordable 3D rendering PC. I'm actually really excited to build that one. It's a black and red aesthetic. And maybe even a Threadripper build in the future. To power this, I went with the Corsair RME1000. Super high quality power supply, 80 plus gold rated. If you're looking at power supplies, I would definitely recommend looking at the power supply tier list. A lot of independent reviewers came in and looked at the components of each power supply and put them in tier A, tier B, tier C. This is one of the high end on tier A, so really high quality power supply, really good efficiency, and I'll be able to power this thing just fine. And if you're interested in the build, feel free to reach out to me. My email's right here. But anyways, that wraps up the video. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe for more 3D rendering content. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.